Need me to send in proof of my name change? Fine. Enjoy your jammed fax machine. So, I was granted a legal name change a few months ago. Long, boring story as to why. Simply put, hated the unique spelling of my first name and wanted to ditch my surname. Didn't have much trouble updating my name most places. Social security, driver's license, insurance, yada yada. No bumps in the road until I got to the very last thing to update. My credit card. I use this particular credit card a lot. I'm self-employed and use this card to rack up travel points for flights, hotels, rental cars, etc. However, if you've ever checked into a hotel or picked up a rental car, you'll know the name on the card must match the name on the ID. So I call the CC company. Told I have to fill out a certain document and mail that in alongside a copy of the court document. Fair enough. Two weeks go by, hear nothing, so call again. They say they haven't received it. I'm then informed they have a fax number that I can use to send in the documentation. So I fax in everything necessary using an app on my phone. Another two weeks go by, still nothing. I call again. Same spiel on the other end of the phone. Please mail or fax. You get the deal. I once more did what they asked, yet another week passes. I call again. Told the same damn script. I'm starting to get annoyed by this point. I have an upcoming trip planned and need the card to match my ID. So I ask to speak to a manager. They give me some BS of a manager not being currently available anyways. I fax in the document and court order once again. However, this time I decided I was just going to keep hitting send after the previous one had shown as delivered. I thought I'd repeat the process a few times, just to make sure they got it. After sending it 25 times the first day, I got no response. Next day, I was sitting on my couch watching football. Thought I'd send the fax a few more times. By the time I realized how many times I'd hit send, I had sent it over 130 times. The very next afternoon, I got a call from a manager at CC Company. She sounded quite angry over the phone. I just played dumb. You guys asked me to fax it in. I got my updated card in the mail three days later. Story two. Are you sure you want me to take part in this go-kart race? Sure thing, boss. A few years back, I started my first job as a mechanic and was informed of a mandatory monthly kart race in the local track, which was promoted by my boss and owner of the company. He didn't care if you enjoyed it or not. He booked the time slot, and we all had to show up after working hours and paying our own ticket to drive. It was supposed to be a team building exercise, and I could see the boss really liked race cars through the various pictures and trophies in his office. During the week, in anticipation to the event, boss would motivate, participate in setting the mood for the upcoming race. It was the only topic that week, and I was told by colleagues that this was really important. I knew that on the evening of the race, I had to pick up my girlfriend, and that would clash with the race. So a couple of days before, I told my supervisor that I would not attend the race. It was after hours, and on my dime anyway, so I didn't think it would be a problem. Some 20 minutes later, I'm summoned to the boss's office, and he's not looking happy. He tells me that building the team's spirit is one of his priorities, and that I'm new there, so I was to give a lot of focus to this monthly event if I was to keep working there, because it was part of the core culture of the company. I really needed the job, so I just said, sure thing, boss. On the evening of the event, I drive to the cart track, and upon arrival, I see my colleagues all in jeans and t-shirts and my boss in full ballerina attire. He had racing overalls, racing boots, gloves, and even a custom helmet. It downed on me the reason for the event and why so much attention was given to it. Cart racing was his thing. With about 15 racers, I asked to start dead last. Boss man listens to me talking and intervenes in front of everyone that we were there to race and not to just drive around slowly. Up until that point, I wasn't really paying much attention, but I decided to comply and show how much the core corporate culture was important to me. Starting from last, I proceeded to overtake all other carts, including boss man on the outside of a fast corner. Overtaking on the outside is often seen as a bold, arrogant move. After just a few more laps, I reached him again, and as I was about to lap him, he went into the pits and stepped out. 
I duly won the race, and as I left the track into the bar, the real team building event, someone tells me that the boss had left. At the bar, the topic of the evening was how I had outraced everyone, and how the boss, who had won all races since ever, was livid with my performance. Too bad for him. I guess I forgot to add to my resume that I had raced carts competitively as a kid, so I knew what I was doing and shattered his Ricky Bobby dreams. After that, I was always courteously invited, but never again required to show up to his events. I went a few times, but arrived late on purpose, so I would just take part on the bar thing and not the race. Story three, medical clerk made me stand outside in 104 degree heat, so I staged a mini revolution. This took place during the first summer of lockdown where I live. Some context for you. My town is basically on the edge of nowhere. We have a medical center for basic stuff, but a full hospital is 30. 40 minutes in any direction, depending on where you chose to go. With that in mind, we get people from a huge surrounding area that go to our town center for tests, simple medical exams, etc. Maybe as many as 50 small communities use our center on a daily basis, so it is constantly busy. The center itself is quite small compared to hospitals in the city. The various clinics and a basic ER take up most of the space with an area by the front doors for the public to sit in if they are waiting for a ride or someone visiting a doctor. It is that waiting area that is the cause for my story today. One day during the first summer of lockdown here, I had to go to the medical center for tests. Some things to know about me. I am challenged with multiple disabilities. I am legally blind, have significant mobility and balance issues, and a rather severe heart condition. As such, I use a walking frame and travel using the city's provided disabled transports. That particular day, I had finished my tests early and had 45 minutes to wait until my transport was scheduled to return to pick me up. I figured, no problem, I will just sit in the waiting area and, well, wait, ha ha. I shuffled over to the seats with my walker plainly evident and was confronted by a new sign, staff only. Say what now? I looked around at all the empty seats and vacant tables and turned to the clerks at the entrance. Me, can I please have a seat in the waiting area until my transport come back? Clerk, coldly. No, it's staff only. You need to wait outside. Me, uh, I can stand for 45 minutes waiting for my transport, gesturing to my plainly apparent walking frame that I was clearly leaning heavily on. Clerk, not my problem. There are benches to sit on outside. Me, the benches are full and we are supposed to be social distancing, not cuddling up to random strangers on a park bench. Clerk, if you want, I suppose I could let you take a wheelchair out and sit in that. Me, and how am I to manage a wheelchair and my walking frame at the same time? Clerk, again, not my problem. If you want, you can call center management when you get home. Are we done here? Me, I guess we are done, huh? And went outside to find a spot to wait. Well, I stood outside for the 45 minutes while the sun beat down on what turned out to be 104 F day. As I stood there, I noticed that there was a line of patients growing steadily longer, also standing outside in the heat, waiting to be let into the building. Some looked fit, but let's face it, nobody comes to a medical center because they feel 100%. Most of them looked quite ill, and some were looking pretty faint by the time they got through the doors. By the time my transport arrived, I was badly sunburned, thirsty as hell, exhausted, and feeling more than a bit faint myself. My driver was shocked and insisted on walking me to my front door when he got me home to make sure I was okay. Shout out to all transport drivers, you guys rock. The rest of the day was a complete loss. I spent it drinking water, sleeping, and nursing the burns on my shoulders and face LOL. I was a right mess. The next day, however, I was pissed. I had plenty of time to recover and to think, and I kept coming back to that line of patients standing in the heat. The more I thought about it, the angrier I got. Malicious compliance. The words the clerk so smugly said, you can call center management when you get home if you want, danced through my sun-baked brain like a mantra. I called center management. What followed was a half-hour conversation with the sweetest lady. 
She was so nice and so upset when I told her all that went on the day before. She was especially concerned when she found out about the line of people waiting outside when what turned out to the, the hottest day we had that summer. After our talk, the manager promised to look into it and get back to me. Now, normally that's sort of a brush off, right? Not so with this lady. Two days later, she called me back. Turned out she had spent the day before sitting at the clerk's desk observing things that went on. Things like patients being forced to stand in the rain waiting to get into the center, patients being poorly spoken to by the same clerk. And the cherry on top? At one point, a tiny elderly lady tried to sit down in the waiting area, and the same clerk ran over and rudely shoved her aid and snapped staff only, with her boss sitting right there. The manager went over, tore down the signs, apologized to the lady and helped her to a seat, then took the clerk into her office for a chat. The results. The center was immediately restructured. Staff were moved into an unused gift shop, the waiting room as returned to the public and best of all. The registry desks were moved so patients no longer had to stand outside waiting to get into the building. I never saw that clerk there again. I know this isn't as exciting as most stories on here, but knowing I was part of making things so much better for so many still makes me happy. Dang it, I am proud of my mini-coup ha-ha-ha, vive la resistance, and all that crap.